Hey, I'm Lara McGee, Dublin and Chemical Croaks footballer. Um, and I'm joined today with my dad, a uh, former Dublin and Croaks uh, footballer as well. How are you, dad? Yeah, good, yeah. Uh, nice to see and hear from you. I haven't heard from you in a while. You know, we're very busy, you know, so. So just have a few questions for you, I suppose. Um, you can ask me some and I can ask you some. And we'll just all just start off. So, um, what made you fall in love with sport as a kid? Yeah, I suppose the probably more, more so to do with your your grand your nanny and granda. Um, big part of our life was being brought down to the club on a, on a Saturday morning um, with the academy. Um, and uh, I suppose your nanny at the time, you know, look. Uh, the rest of it, she's nine, nine months uh, very tomorrow or dead tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, so it's just been built around uh, that family environment. And your nanny worked in the clubhouse and became a code in the, in the, the old uh, function room there. So she was to give an, um, it was it was go train and then go into, into her looking for uh, warm soup and sandwiches and stuff. So, yeah, it was fairly early doors in terms of, you know, the, GA being part of our life and and still organ, you know, um, and uh, I suppose it would, it was supposed to stand out kind of or the, the other memory then probably you maybe the affiliation or the falling in love with Dublin was probably the you know six years of age. Um, Noel Clancy who who uh, won a Dublin All Ireland uh, minor title and they brought the the All Ireland Cup back to uh, Kimmel Court. So as a six year old, you know, you got to see that and you know. Um, so it became very kind of realistic of what, what like, you know, in terms of playing for Dublin or, you know, being a part of that, that, that sporting life, you know, and those, those would be the, the big kind of memories. And it's, it's classy, you know, the photograph of that, that day when Noel arrived with the cup, it was myself and, and Bino, who was Robbie Bean, uh, would have been in the front front row of that, that celebration. There was a photo come up there during the lockdown of, of it, you know, and, and just the memories of it, Kind of flooding back, you know, I suppose, and happy memories, you know. That would be probably the, you know, and your granddad and the affiliation with the club for, from very young age, you know, um, kind yeah. of a big, big part of our lives. Yeah, fair enough. Um, that's kind of cool that the that photo recircled. I, I actually was only speaking to Noel Clancy there the other day, so um, that's mad. Um, but well, I'll go on to the next session. Was there a moment when you knew, like, I was usually into football, like, there's obviously an age, I think, of turning point for me, but what was your recollection of it? <laughs> well, I suppose, look, it was, you know, it was trying to try uh, bring you down and get you involved with the academy, similar to what, what your nanny and granddad did for me, uh, um, you know, and... I suppose the first few years of, of the academy is just kind of you know bringing down having fun and conversations, you know, um, and, and letting you find your feet. And you know, I suppose when you start seven or eight years of age, you, you could probably see, you know, I think he was from the fact that you were coming, uh, watching myself and your uncle play down, uh, playing and the, and your you know, your auntie's niece playing. We think you know, it was you were going for the ball as. If you like the panel, that very similar to what the traits or what me and Darren would have been like. So it was trying to harness that and make you realise it was it was ladies football and trying to, you know, <laughs> get you to hold back a small bit. But you know, at the end of the day, you were going for the ball and it was no there was no real intent in it. So it was kind of it was funny to see. Um, and then like it was you know I think from around eight eight years of age you're gonna. You can see where you kind of start standing out a small bit, you know, um, in, in in the games, and you know it was kind of evident that look if you kept on that path, you know, you, you definitely you were going to have a future in it. But like at that stage, you know, you, for me as as your dad, it was just, it was just kind of hoping you were enjoying it, and it was trying to give you the kind of memories and the 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 friendships that I would have started, would have built up from that age coming through. So look, it was trying to give you that kind of experience, and you know, and have that kind of a, a, you know an outlet and. Of being able to play sports, um, and you know, obviously, you know, keep you off the, the road, so to speak. Like it would have been a big, big thing for me. What a group of lads I hung around with that um, it kept me on the straight and narrow, kept me off the road, and um, would have played 
uh, who had a few lads who obviously look uh, went straight as small, but, but like the I had good lads with me, like Ray Cosgrove and Nick O'Keefe, and that would have kind of kept me pretty grounded, you know. So look, it was it was yeah, it was important for me to kind of give you that kind of uh, start about GA, you know. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, do you have any questions for me rather than me asking all the questions first? Well, look, I suppose, look, uh, what's your first memory of Sporting House in our house? Suppose to, like... I think, I think that photo, well, like, I can always remember, I have a great, I always remember, I have a good memory, I suppose. I feel like I, even when I was a kid, I, I remember a lot of stuff and I think, like, dressing up in my Krogs gear, like, head to toe and um, prancing around in Bowfield and Slorgan. Um, but also, obviously, for me, it was always just being at the matches, like, literally was there probably the earliest, like, because I was there from the warm-up. So being at all your matches, even training sessions, do, trying to practice doing the warm-up on, <laughs> on the other end of the pitch or, like, going to um, Dublin training, like, which you kind of, if, like, if I was, if there was now something to mind me and, like, sitting out in the car, like, or, like, being around... Uh, watching the sideline so I think that was always um, a memory of mine just always being either in the club or just at a double match like either at or and I suppose even like with with Crokes growing up like underage and like going to matches like Joan Kyo wouldn't get in the car without me because I knew how to get to all the different grounds um, like around Dublin because of going to all the matches with you and there's a time where there was, it was still Google Maps, but it wasn't great. So she, she, but then she'd be at times wouldn't trust me, but I'd always get her. It'd be back roads that I'd be bringing her, and we'd still end up in the same place, just because I remembered all the roads and all the routes from going to all your matches. So I think that was definitely um something that I'd always remember, and I always cherish being able to look back and have those memories. Just like might not have been with you. But it's still time that I spend with you and Darren, like just watching his and and um, still being like close by and stuff. So yeah, no, I think we were just always around. I was just always around it. So I didn't think I knew anything different, but I loved it as well. Got yeah, off no, everyone as well. So obviously that was good. Yeah, no, listen, it was just like, like going to training and and trying to give you McDonald's before training to kind of feed you and then. You know, and then obviously Lindsay, my wife, you know, or like as Lindsay, like you know, if I couldn't, if Lindsay was working or something, or you know, if I couldn't there uh, drop you off, or your husband dropped you off, and then I went around to David's and our Dane. So Lindsay only parents lived in Glass and Avenue. So look, it was just kind of, you know, but look between us, between me, mom and dad and Lindsay, uh, and then Darren and Denise at times, you know, or, you know you're either with myself or with, with them. So yeah, look, it was it was nice to be able to share that, you know, those moments and then, like, I suppose we've shared a few podiums as well, like with you and Ava. I suppose it was, that was the one thing for me is, you know, be able to share that moments um, and have, be able to look back on it and, and be able to show your younger sisters and, and brothers, brothers now of it, you know, it's was, it was, it was nice to have, you know. But, uh, you know, uh, it, was, it was definitely a busy time. <laughs> yeah. Um. What what did you find most difficult about playing sport when like I suppose when you're my age or like from like maybe I'd say like probably from when you're 18, 19 going up like to my age now, like what well, was probably the like hardest part of playing like sport, especially if you're still playing with Dublin, not like a high level. So obviously a lot of commitment. It was I suppose the it was trying to juggle everything. It was trying to juggle being a young dad, um, trying to juggle uh, getting the proper training in, trying to juggle the, my work situation, um, you know, and I was just trying to those those balls in the air. So obviously, you're my number one priority. So obviously, you came first. So I was trying to manage the time, that, that, like, so the evenings that I'd have you or, you know, um, I'm trying to act like you was training. That could Lindsay have mind you or could my mum and dad or you know or Denise or something so it was just kind of you know it was pretty hectic um trying to balance all that I suppose the the one thing because from that time would have really like I suppose I didn't uh, like that, that's not so much of now that like the mind games that came with 
playing um, football. It was just in terms of, you know, uh, mowing games in terms of just different, you know, uh, management and stuff and trying to, it's not realising that, you know, young a young man, a young father trying to have a lot of balls balanced in the air, trying to balance everything out, you know, so look, I suppose that was, that was a challenge in itself, but look, listen, it was, uh, you know, so was at that stage, at that age, you know, uh, looking back at it now, you know, it's kind of, okay, Jay, like it would have, like it took a lot, an awful lot of um, sacrifice from, you know, from Lindsay and, you know, you know uh, my mum and dad and helping me out, you know, um, and I suppose in, the, in that time, I probably didn't really, I probably just, because I was young and 18, 19, 20, like I was just kind of, you know, every day was different, but the main objective was kind of, Make sure you were sorted, and then obviously then, um, which I'm obviously then as well, and just kind of you know having the balance right, and then give the right commitments to, to to Dublin that was required, you know, and you know, and then like you're just, it's funny like you know, uh, Lindsay used to come over, and when you were staying with us, because I was so tired at the times, I would bring you to bed <laughs> at half seven, and then we're going to sleep, which you you know what I mean. So it was. You know, but Lindsay, in fairness, where she realised that, you know what I mean, like in terms of, you know, she was a huge support for, for me and you and at the time, but particularly in those, that, those stages where, you know, would have been on my feet in terms of, you know, training, working and making sure you were sorted as well and just kind of, you know, going to bed at half seven, oh, you're going to watch the, the DVD with Lauren and then fall asleep then. So then we woke up around half ten, you know, but look, yeah, like it was, it was, um, it was just a balancing act, and it was just kind of, it was great. or very appreciative of the support that I had, the support and everyone around me, then, you know. So, that, that, like, that's key, you know. So, yeah, now because I look at like, I was like, look at like, I struggle, like, obviously, I balance my time well, but I still struggle. And I look at like, obviously, you did it, and then girls that I've just two girls I played with with Dublin, and they were playing Dublin after having kids, and just like. I think it's like unbelievable. Like obviously you can't do it alone. You have to have the support system around. So it just shows that like when you have that support system, like you can continue. Like it doesn't like and both girls were young mums as well. So like um it just shows like like the commitment you need to still make, but once you have the support there, like I suppose like it's it's very admirable to to continue to play at such a high standard, like so. Yeah. No, well, it's I suppose asking. I never, really, never, I never really asked. Do you ever feel pressure from because I played and Darren played, and do you ever feel pressure of playing football um, when you were young? Or, like, did you feel you had to? Like, did you feel, or did you enjoy it? Or you know, or, or like it was um, just kind of something that you felt you had to do? Or like, because that was one. Because I would have always feel that even now with your younger sisters, is that you know the big thing for me is is enjoyment. Um, if you're not enjoying it, it's very hard then to to, yeah. to motivate yourself or push yourself forward. Like so, no, I actually never felt pressured. Like when went down to the club, and you know, like for like up until I was probably eight or nine, like I kind of only went down just to have a chat, like more so than anything else. Like especially at the nursery and stuff, just to have a bit of a mess. And I just used to go because I had loads of friends, and it wasn't about the football then. And then I think when it when it started clicking that I was good at it, that I didn't I didn't feel pressure. I just played it because I liked it. And I was obviously very lucky to the group that I had, like my age group of 97. Like I had such, we had such a core group growing up. And we had, like, like fortunately we had a really successful, obviously underage team all the way up. So I just, I think I just really enjoyed it. I never, I don't think I've ever felt pressure to go on and play like, for Dublin or anything I think it just it's just the way it happened and obviously when I started playing underage like I loved it so it just was one of those things I never felt like like I was doing it for like obviously like you do it as like but when you're that age and now I look back and I'm like I do do it for like the likes of yourself and Darren Nanny and Grandad and like Lindsay and all my family but back then I think I just really enjoyed it so I just continued to play like so I, I don't think I ever felt like I was like you could see, like when you're minor, especially under sixteen minor in club, like you could see the the numbers of girls dropping off, and some of them you knew by them that they were only there because, like, their parents kind of 
they did like it to a degree, but at that stage, they, their lives were changing and they their interests were changing. So they kind of only there to to kind of keep their parents happy. So I I don't I never felt that way, thankfully. Yeah, no, I, I just kind of because I was very conscious of like I would have been obviously involved with your teams growing up and like yeah. for a couple of years, and I was always very conscious of being or having a shadow behind you and and having fear because I was involved with. You. The team, whenever I was there, when it wasn't clashing with, with Dublin or Croaks, it was that like I didn't want to feel that you had had to be pressurized into it. That's why I always felt, you know, when when it came to I think it was sixteen, when I put, kind of pulled away properly in terms of not being involved with the team, because I think mean, it was important. I know from my own dad when he said like because he kind of pulled away, he would have been involved with the teams on the age of me, I suppose from under twelve coming through and being involved and he kind of kind of stepped away in terms of being not being involved as, as a selector and that because you know to just kind of allow me find my feet without you know the, my dad looking over my shoulder not that my dad dad my, my daddy was kind of he, he very laid back but he left at least the one he was the one person I could go to and ask kind of you know he let me know if I was good or not or whatever like and it, there was no no, no there was no kind of, it was very honest. So it was black and white. So I knew if he said I was poor or I didn't play particularly well or if I didn't mark my man, he let me know. But then he would let me know the positive side of it. So I was always very conscious of that for you as well. So that you were able to find your own feet, not having the shadow of your dad or your uncle being over you watching. So like it was important that I felt at the time to pull away then. So that like, you know, to make the mistakes and not have fear that you're, you know, oh, my dad, dad's watching it and that sort of goes. I was kind of glad that you were to find your life, be able to enjoy it that way, you know, and that it wasn't, you didn't feel the pressure from feeling, okay, if I didn't play for Dublin or if I didn't play well, oh, my dad would be upset, like, you know. Yeah, no, I don't think, yeah, I think it just, like, I was always like wanting, like, I was, oh, like, I'd always go to you for advice, same as now, but like, I'm well able to ignore you on the sideline if I need to. That was the thing. So I don't think I ever I think like I think you now like sometimes people get too worked up if their parents or someone's shouting on them and not it's not in a bad way, just encouraging and obviously yourself. And I'd always remember like Frank Rutledge, even now, like with like Ava Rutledge, like he'd be shouting and she'd be ignoring him, but I'd be listening to him. And she was like, I'd be listening to Johnny because it wasn't her dad. And we both knew that both of us had knowledge of the game, like so. We did want to listen, but also like because you were our dads, we were kind of like ignoring you for like just because we were young. But like it's it's the same thing. Like Ava listened to you, and I listened to Frank. Like especially on the pitch, it was more like off the pitch. It's grand, but I think when you're in the middle of a game, I think sometimes you you listen to other people rather than like you're the closest to you. So but it was never a bad thing. It was just um, it was just funny the way it worked. Um. <clears throat> Another question I have: What do you think um has been the biggest evolution like in sports since your days playing? So obviously a lot has changed in terms of like just in general how people prepare and all yeah, that. I, guess the, the, I suppose the science behind it has has shifted massively. I suppose when I was playing, you know, Liam Hennessy would have been our SSC back in the oh, show my age now. 99, you know, uh, when Tommy Carr took over and, and we were doing a mixture of doing gym and then going straight out into the fields. Um, but in terms of like rehab and prehab stuff, in terms of, you, you know, I, I see the value of it you know, uh, now um, when I would have been playing, I would have, like, I'd be giving out the players that are playing with, with, with a toy hamstring or, or a strain. <laughs> Myself, I know, I'm not talking about other players, but myself particularly, I know myself, I would have been, you know, t- I would take a painkiller and then go and play. And, you know, if I got it, like trying to hide an injury, like, so there's been plenty of times where I've, you know, had a sprained ankle, I suppose, or, or the leg, leg went down to my ankle or, or shoulder an injury or whatever, and trying to, you know, ma- uh, you know, trying to hide it because I didn't want to lose my spot on the, on the team. Like, so I think in terms of, the evolution of the sports science behind it has been has been massive, and then obviously look at being the tactics and everything else. But like the thing for me, you know, what I find is that like you know, uh, I find at this moment I, I think there's some overcoaching happening, whereas coaches are holding players' hands too much. 
so when uh, and trying to manage every situation with the, with the ball and without the ball and I think you can only get you have to try to balance between allowing a, a player to make a decision for himself in the moment and whether it's to see a pass or to cut off space or to you know I think there's too much micromanaging of of some players and some teams are doing it um, and just kind of you know allowing players then to make mistakes and to see a pass when they're under pressure um, I think there's a lot of uh, lateral recycling and it's become a, a, a very possession based game but I, what I find is you need to try to balance between when to have possession and when to go on attack and I think there's there's the safe coach and I find is where coaches will not want to give the 60-40 ball um, that might unlock a unlock a, uh, a run or a, a player inside like you know that will score a goal and they'll win a game for you and rather than recycle the ball sideways and backwards and trying to wait for that for you know the, the opportunity which is fine uh, when you're managing the game but then you've I've seen it all over what over the, the last few years where teams trying to play possession and, for, and wait for the perfect time to get the shot off and sometimes it just doesn't happen and they get put, caught in the back foot and then you know they lose a massive game so uh, but yeah, yeah I think the balance between getting the the micromanaging and but also just allowing players to 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 see the moment, they'll ever make mistakes and learn from that and, and see the pass or see the danger. I think there's a lot of micromanaging. So I think from that point of view, it's great in terms of the science around it, but then and the and the tactics and the game management, which is brilliant, but also I think there needs to be the balance between the two of okay, allowing lads, okay, well, just have we set up with the ball, just have we set up without the ball. But you know, I need you to trust in 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 the moment that you can back that player in that given given eventuality. But like Dublin would have been what masters of that the, the five row six row team where you've seen that they could play the uh, take the gamble, uh, particularly uh, the twenty nineteen final where they were a point down and a man down, and you know they had the the cleverness of being trusted by Jim, and you guess you see that, that they pushed up, Clucker pushed up on Mulch, and and then allowed Glasgow man on man at the field. So and they coughed up the they they, they turned the carry over and you only the hog and stand halfway line and, and end up getting the equal score. So and but that that comes down from empowering players to play what's in front of them, not being safe and on that, like realizing okay, the game needs to be Taking it, or, or we're going. To, if we don't start to get a score now. We need to, or we're going to be out as we lose by final. So look, I think that's the the biggest thing I find. You know. Yeah, no, I think it's. I think like over the last obviously few years, like, like even like, like analysis is great. Like obviously it's there, and the huddle's a big one that most teams use, and you can go back and just like it's unbelievable work that players and management put in to like to like making playlists and going back and watching the stuff. But I find sometimes like some players benefit from that. Like as in loads of players would like some players would watch that on the day of a match, like say like if they're marking someone or they're, they know they're going to be marked by someone and how they can, their right foot, their left foot, kind of what way they go about the game. And that will help them. Whereas if I know I'm marking someone on their left foot or their, or their dominant foot is left or their dominant foot's right. And I kind of know what way they played like I, I personally would just rather go just play the game and just see how it unfolds. And there is going to be things, and I think it's, I think there's, it's like learning anything. Some people are visual learners. Some people are just learners about doing it. And I think it's great to have it there, but I don't think it works for everyone. So like, although it's amazing, our technology we have, and it's amazing for teams to have that there, like, and to look back at it. I think it's good for like looking back on your own performance, especially like you might not, you might miss things that you've done. And sometimes you play a game and you forget half the stuff that's happened. But I think sometimes like management, like it's, it's good chill to have and it's there, but like not everyone like me, like, or like everyone is expected to at least watch a match back. But like, do you know what I mean? Some players just don't. Yeah, so, you know, I agree with you. I think some players, you know, relish that and enjoy that. And that, yeah. that visual feedback, like, listen, look, uh, Lads can look back and see their mistakes. I think, like some players, you know, they were, you know, I, I know from my own, like I would have identified when I was playing, you know, the, the, the tactics or, or the stats, um, the analysis wouldn't have been as in depth. But you, you would knew, you, I look, I went to do my homework of who was playing and who was marking or, you know, trying to identify what side they were stronger on. But I wouldn't, but I was, I would have 
concentrate more on what my role was and how yeah. how I was going to affect the game with, with the ball and then without the ball, how could I be effective for, for my team? I think it's it's about getting the balance right and because I think the important thing from, from a perspective of playing a high level is that you need to have a certain amount of enjoyment of it as well. And, you know, if if players are, you know, training in gym, training in field sessions, and then they're expected to do homework of hours of analysis on opposition and stuff, I think that's where you don't, I don't think you get the, the, the you won't get the play, best, best of players for a certain period, but I think their, uh, their enthusiasm and their, their desire for the game will, will suffer from that because I think it's yeah. just, so much of anger, so such and, a balance now. Yeah, because like, I think like sometimes you feel like, as you said, like the trainings become more intense, like gym sessions, all that recovery sessions as well is put in there. So then when you have your analysis thrown on top of that, and then people are working full time, like it does become a lot. And again, as you said, like I think it's, I think it's, I think it's different between each person. I think some people really benefit from it, and some people like think it's. It's good to have, but it's not the be all and end all. So I think it's trying to strike a balance of having it there. Like I do think, like as you said, stats are good. Like, like if you know, like a lot of the time, like the players know that you've like I'm a person that gave the ball away five times. Like you know yourself that like okay, that's not good enough. That type of thing. But like, or like where are like kind of shot to score ratio and that type of stuff. I think is good, but sometimes I do think over analyzing is a bit does take away from the enjoyment. I know obviously for purpose of being successful, it is it is there to do that, but I don't think it needs to be as in-depth at times. But yeah. Um do you have any regrets about life committed to God? Because like I know a lot of people sometimes not that they regret putting in the time, but they do look back and they're like, God, like could have did this, this, and this, and that type of stuff. Um, do you have any? Oh, I, I suppose the um, no, no regrets in terms of the sacrifice, the GA. Like, I suppose the I probably let it consume my life. Um, probably, you know, I, I suppose I would have struggled in terms of um. Look, I'm dyslexic, you know, would have struggled in school. Um, I was one of the kids that went out to, to the, the reading teacher and um, would have struggled numerically and uh, verbally in terms of, uh, you know, numbers and, and alphabetically in terms of, like, spellings and reading and everything else and times tables. And then, like, you know, it became, look, it became Evan knows that I was good at football in school. And, you know, then the principal at the time, um, you know, I remember he wasn't too happy because I didn't know. I, I can't remember what time stamps it was. And uh, and then that afternoon we went and played football. I played a schools match and like I was playing above myself. I was in four classes playing for the junior team. We were fifth. And um, I got man a match or something. And he came over and he, he apologised for how he treated me in class later on. And I suppose the... The big thing I probably did struggle with, uh, you know, with was I suppose the it was the only thing I ever recognised I was good at. Um, I would have it was the only thing I felt that was that I was only uh, in terms of you know or you know we're not going to college doing my leaving cert. Um, I suppose afterwards, I suppose that was that was a huge regret in terms of not going and expressing that. But I think the trying to deal with with the with with the loss of GA, um, you know, when I, when I finished playing with Dublin and came a good, you know, that was a, it was like a death. Yeah. You know, I suppose, and really struggled, I uh, suppose. So in terms of sacrifice at the time, I, you know, I, I would have lived and breathed it, um, you know, probably too much at times and, and, and not concentrate on, on, on in terms of work life and stuff and, and felt it owed me at times. Um, and it didn't, you know, and I suppose I got caught up in, you know, um, feeling sorry for uh, myself in terms of, you know, that I didn't get what I wanted out, out of the game and getting angry then and stuff. And so, but it's kind of, 
sort of massively in terms of the the, the, the aftermath of, of finishing up playing. Um, you know, definitely struggled massively in suppose. Um, but then <clears throat> having to step out from that and finding uh, the release then of getting into coaching and and, and uh, getting back involved in some capacity to help deal with with the loss of not being not being not playing football. I suppose that was the big because it was the one thing I always knew I was half good at. Um, because of all, I was always being suppressed in terms of in school, like you know, because it was dyslexic and you know picked on because you know because you were dyslexic, or you're you're the tick of the class and stuff. As well as that was that was a big part of when when it came to finishing up, it was kind of dealing with those those emotions and, and not really well, what Jesus, what am I going to do? I'm not foot, I'm not, not a footballer anymore. I'm not playing football, and you know, and not as suppose well as I think the you know, to step away and kind of look for the bigger picture then when I was still I was I was a husband I was father of, of four beautiful girls and, and, and I was realising okay step away so I suppose trying to manage that and like when I, at the time I would have been I should have probably been able to so with now with the way things are at the moment I think that's the one thing about at the moment in terms of there's so much you know care and, and for mental well-being and, 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 and dealing with the pressures of GA or what's what's next about if you're not away from the field and college and what you're doing. So there's so much there now. Whereas at the time, I suppose, you know, when when, when I finished up with Dublin and uh, you know, it felt I was in a bit of look I was in a dark place and look I look I look I got over, but it was it definitely kind of no no regrets, uh, really, but like yeah. just kind of afterwards I would have felt I should have probably you know, manage a bit more. So I think that's with the way at the moment, you know, with the management teams with county teams or, or top club teams, there's a sports psychologist, there's, you know, you've got your physio, you've got your SNC, you've got your stats, you've got, you've got so many people who are experts in the field. I feel, yeah. you know, that's where I probably should have maybe, there wasn't as much sports psychology or something, but maybe that's an avenue I should have kind of maybe looked at to help me deal with those, those things, you know. Yeah. Definitely, I'm not going off on a blade and spill there, but I was about that side, but. Sorry. I mean, just in terms of like, you know, how much uh, like in terms, have you learned anything from my career in terms of the, like you would have been front and center for a lot of it, but I know you're very young, probably. So like you're probably just gonna skip it along. But I suppose afterwards, in terms of like you know, once you got a little bit older, did you did you learn anything from 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 me or or from? Yeah, like uh, I like although yeah, I was quite young. Like obviously watching you and Darren, I suppose play, but. I think he's always left like a legacy with the way he's played and like I obviously play like a lot like both years in different aspects and I suppose your knowledge of the game and the way you went about things, even when you play for Croaks and you captained them to the All Ireland a lot. I was young, like yeah, like just watching like your your own wedding, like coming up to was it the semi final? of the All Ireland that like you weren't able to drink and different things like that. So suppose like watching how you went about everything and like how like I know like you can you can still enjoy like you can enjoy like you still had a great crack at your home wedding like although you might have had a pint bottle of boomers and that was it. But like I think I did take away like although you make sacrifices to miss different things or like not give everything your full like trot a lot of like it's still worth it like in terms even you win or lose like you just I think you make those sacrifices but again like I find the way you said like um that like it was kind of like losing someone when you have to give it up like I think that's always the fear of like when you're coming when you're approaching obviously like when you hear of like people retiring and it's not like that far away when you like you actually don't have as many years as you like you know what I mean playing than you do of like when you when you retire how many years you don't play for so I think that that's I think that's a fear of everyone I suppose when you watch any of the girls like and not even a fear of like stepping away from Dublin but more like your club I suppose or not having any kind of outlet um is definitely a thing but no, I definitely learned a lot from me and I'm still learning a lot because I feel like coaching as well like not only like oh, you're obviously with Geraldine's like and you're coaching like underage as well as senior teams like like different different teams and 
obviously like being able to do summer camps with you and then learning from that I suppose and um, I have learned a lot and wanting to like back I'm back obviously in the school teaching but wanting to go back and do my teaching degree like you do take all those little things that you do with the kids and different things like that from so it's not just football that like you know what I mean that I've taken stuff from it's also everyday life and that I can bring because I know like that's like like you can see the kids with you when you're like you're stern and you can be strict but they all like move you and I think that that's what I try to bring in when I'm teaching or I'm teaching like P at the moment and like obviously I have a very wide like big variety of kids who like as you said like you were your ability to play like you're really good like like at sport but like you might not have been um that good in the class and like you're you're dealing with kids that are the opposite like when you're a PE teacher so it's like having to deal with them as well so um I'm, I've taken a lot from you you and Darren I'll give Darren a shout out there just in case he gives it <laughs> um, um, what was what's been your proudest moment as a parent I don't know what that means in general or do you have to pick <laughs> Yeah, I'll be careful with this one. No, I think I suppose the proudest moment as a parent, our parent is is the you know, I suppose when like seeing being there for 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 the four years being born, you know, um, and uh, being a part of that, obviously, you know, and I think you know, uh, seeing how you've all, I know Nas and they are Daisy and Nasa was it not well. Uh, 10 and 12 next week, but like, uh, well, like then your sister A was 16 and then yourself was 25 now, was it? Oh my God. Like, well, anyways, but yeah, no, just, just, just enjoying the, 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 how you are, are growing up. Um, and I, I suppose I'm, I'm probably pr- really proud of the relationship. I suppose, can you say you're, you're probably, I think, you're, I, you know, I think I have a, a lovely relationship, like as, with Lindsay and the girls but I think like we've a nice balance yeah, as you said there you know there's uh, not that I'm awfully strict or staying as like you know but like I try I, I try to you know try to you know give enough give enough rope for the for for you to learn and stuff and I suppose yeah. the proudest thing I can is that like you know that you're, ha- you're happy um, and as you know pretty emotional guy <laughs> wearing my heart my sleeve and so I struggle with the, you know trying to make our Making sure you guys are, are you know, are, are okay. You know, that's the this was that's the worry as a father. You know, particularly for girls, you know, very protective in that sense because of the way the world is and stuff at times. And, yeah. And the way boys are and everything. That, like, not saying boys are terrible too. <laughs> don't get me wrong, with me, but it's just kind of very protective, you know, because you know, and just kind of make sure you guys are okay. This was the proudest thing is that how you are how you are all kind of grown into the to to the beautiful like yeah young lady or young ladies and the beautiful woman who you are and 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 the, and the girls you are and obviously then your sister Ava who started fifth year this year and like and how she's come on like you know so uh, yeah proud of that probably you know NASA's in six class now and then Daisy's like just two years behind it's mad how quick like obviously for you anyway but like like I was like there especially like remember Ava being born but the fact that like you I remember so clearly NASA and Daisy being born like the size of them now and they're like they literally they don't feel like they're only 10 and 12 to me like they feel like so much older the way we get on like do you know what I mean yeah. so um and then Ava like she literally feels like the same age as me already so like we were literally eight years in the difference of age or it, our gap like we were so different and then it literally in such a short space of time we've it became so alike, you know what I mean, and oh, have so, it's, so it's weird. Like it's scary how how much like you, the two of us are, like you know, and, and like she is on her own at the journey now in terms of being being involved with uh, doing rage with, with me. Come like she's not been on under 12, 14, and sixteen teams. Then this year was first year minor. Like so, yeah. If, what a voice would our big sister give to our little sister in terms of what what have you experienced? Like you've. Been very lucky and I listen to credit to credit to you and I'm not gonna blow fill you with loads of compliments here, but you know how much how proud I am of you, but I think what you've done and what you've strived to do and you're only still only 25, you know, um as you know, very proud of that, but like the how your sisters look up to you. Um 
you know, I think it's a credit to you. But what advice would you give your little sister who's starting out? Like, well, not starting out, but she's she's she actually playing championship this this weekend for 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 Dunamore, uh, Ashburn. So like, she's a uh, sixteen, she's seventeen in November. So like, so what advice would you give your sixteen year old sister? I suppose like you can see over here, like as as you talked about before, like you never wanted to press your eyes was into playing anything or. You could see that Ava made her own decision and it probably out of all of us took her the longest to probably go down GAA like route like that. Or she like play doing ballet, like she kept up ballet. Well, I mean, it was a stage where she we, I brought her down to the academy and you know the first couple of weeks it was not not that I don't like this, I'm not doing it. Now I don't know if it was because it was in the in the arena and it, yeah. it was the noise and everything else, but like the next five years or so it was like it was Taekwondo. I spent money on a Taekwondo. We got a Taekwondo outfit, an Irish dancing outfit, a Bali outfit, a dancing outfit. I said, I said, to, said to my wife, I said, Lindsay, I said, I'm, not buying, I'm not buying any more outfits. Said, That's <laughs> it now. Done. So in fairness to her, look, she would, she, she, she yeah, tried she, everything. Yeah. But like she made it like, and then she was Kamogi before she was football as well at, at stage, wasn't she? I think, or like, she seemed to be going down that route. And then all of a sudden it was football and, like for someone who tried so many things, it's not like that she started later, but like she still, do you know what I mean? It wasn't like she was into football straight away. So just that, like she made her own path. Like like she chose her. Like she did try everything. She got there. Like she not that we want. Like that. Like obviously you'd want her to play, but she didn't want. She wanted to do her own thing. But it was just funny the way she kind of went her own way about getting there compared to like watching NASA. Like NASA's. Live, lives and breathes football and Gaelic, you know what I mean? Like, um, but no, just advice is just to enjoy it. Like, it's like she, she's obviously, it's is her sec, it's her f- second first, year, second, second year, year yeah, playing senior championship, yes, yeah, so. yeah. So it's her second year minor, and obviously, a lot of the time, like, first year minor can be tough because you know what I mean? The second year minor is already there, and it's hard to break into the team. And like, it was her, but she made so much sacrifice. and she put in so much effort and she did really well and like she was well and like good enough to be playing but although she might not have gotten the opportunity to get that much game time she still did really well and um like she was credit to herself and um I suppose just advice is just once she's enjoying it you know what I mean that's all that matters and just to put in if you want to be successful in it like you're gonna have to put in the effort so do you know what I mean like if like you can't like she doesn't really do any like she always goes out and trains but like if you're on a complain like and you haven't put in the effort like that's just from experience of other players growing up where like you could see that they're complaining and not getting in or different things not going their way, way and sometimes that is a case of different management and stuff but I suppose if you always put in the effort and you know that you've done your bit and it's still not working out then you know you've done all you can more so than having any regrets in it like you know what I mean so yeah, that's kind of the, the advice I give her. Like, she's she's doing really well and very proud of her. Like, although, like, we might be playing each other in a few years, hopefully. Any advice that you'd pass on or knowledge to me? Or, like, what would it be, like, in general? I suppose, look, I think for me is 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 the, your your, your football lifespan, you know, is yeah. like that. And then your your life lifespan is, is that size. It's... So, you know, I would say to you, enjoy every moment of it um, yeah. and, 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 and make it as fun as possible because, you know, as I, as I touched on earlier on, it's, you, you know, you're, you don't get it back. Um, and so what I'd say to you is, is, is that enjoy every minute of it. Um, yes, you're going to have up and down, ups and downs, but, like, you know, that, you wouldn't want it any other way because it does... It makes you feel feel obviously alive uh, uh, and in the moment. And when you're, if you're playing all or final or playing a county final for your club, or I think it's just the enjoyment and uh, and the fun uh, fun side of it. But also, you know, it's the it's the learning arc, the friends that you make along the way because they do become your your, your external family. You know, so look look, I'm lucky enough to still very good friends with, with Cosy uh, Ray Cosgrove, and then look obviously Darren, my brother, who I probably wouldn't have been as close. Too because we were similar age and we were constantly, you know, battling and training and stuff. But boy, we got closer you now over over the last few years. But yeah, no, I suppose the one thing um, 
is to go and enjoy it and 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 then don't take things for granted, you know, because you know, as I said to you, your football lifespan is only a short window compared to your 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 overall lifespan. So yeah. Yeah, look, enjoy it. And uh, it's been it's been a pleasure. It's been uh, actually nice to yeah, try and get, get yeah. your time for this length. 